alright. This is the fifth consecutive video that I created for OM System Tough TG7. You can see the links of all the four previous TG7 videos in the video description below, like the unboxing shorts, protecting the camera, and how to use the companion app, the OI Share application. And if you have zero knowledge about TG7, you can check out the ultimate user guide and first impressions video, where I discuss the full specs, how to use it, basic operations, and some initial thoughts. I've already given a lot of detailed information about the TG7 with these previous videos, so this review is basically just a summary of everything, along with the experiences I got on using the TG7 for the last month. If there are details that I will not be mentioning in this video, they were probably already discussed in the previous ones. But of course, feel free to still write your questions in the comment section below, and I'll try to answer them to the best of my knowledge about the OM System Tough TG7 digital camera. This is worth 31,000 Philippine pesos if you are buying it on the local stores here in the Philippines. But for my unit, I bought it from Shopee. The store I bought it from is from Hong Kong, so the warranty is basically non-existent. But I got it for only 23,000 pesos, which is an 8,000 pesos discount. This does not include the SD card yet, and you'll also need to invest for that, as the TG7 will not work without the SD card. First thing that I want to discuss is the build quality of the OM System Tough TG7. Well, to be honest, this is the easiest part to review. It's easily 10 out of 10. The camera is gorgeous. This also comes in black, but this red color is really beautiful. It has a small compact body that can fit in your pocket. And weighs only 253 grams, which is the same weight as most of the gaming phones in the market, like the ROG phone. It is waterproof up to 15 meters, or 50 feet. Shockproof or dropproof, from up to 2.1 meters, or 7 feet of height. It is freeze-proof up to negative 10 degrees Celsius, or 14 Fahrenheit. Crush-proof up to 100 kilograms, or more than 220 pounds of weight. And it is rated IP68 for water and dust resistance. So, no matter what the weather is, no matter what the adventure is, no matter where the location is, and no matter who handles the camera, even if you leave it with the kids, the tough TG7 can withstand all of it. After knowing all of these good stuffs, I'm sure you're with me now, with the confidence of that 10 out of 10 build quality. Tough TG7 is powered by an Li92B lithium-ion battery, with 3.6 volts, and a 1500 mAh capacity. Digital cameras are not like cell phones which can give you a screen on time report. Plus, digital camera usage is very different from cell phones, since phones are always on, while digital camera usage is always staggered. So it is a lot more difficult to gauge the battery life of a digital camera. On paper, the TG7 battery is rated with a battery life of 330 images per charge. In real life, I found this to be true, and sometimes even more than 330 images. Of course, if you record more video footages, it will obviously be less than 330 images. In a more general but vague battery gauge, the TG7 battery can last for a whole day of shooting. I've used it when my family spends time on a mall, and also used it for vlogging footages, and I have never experienced a TG7 prompting me for low battery yet. Charging time in real life is also better than what was advertised. OM system manual claims that 0 to 100% charge will take 3 hours. But based on my experience, it varies only between 2.5 to 245, which is great, comparing to other digital cameras. TG7 now has a modern charging port in the form of USB Type-C, so you can reuse your phone chargers to juice up the camera. Overall, I'm really satisfied with the battery life and charging time of the TG7. Naturally, with its lightweight and compact body, handling of the tough TG7 is really easy. As mentioned from my previous related video, I especially love the grip on this camera, which is well designed. It fits exactly with my two fingers. And using it, even though it is just a tiny bump at the front of the camera, brings a sense of security that you are tightly holding the camera and will never drop it. It makes the handling of the camera a lot easier and comfortable. But for someone like me, who has medium to big hands, while you are securing the camera with a grip, it is hard to reach the shutter button, as well as the record button. Although, I don't think it's a design flaw. It's just that the camera is really small, as it should be. I believe this is something that will be a common problem for someone who has bigger hands, regardless of what digital camera brand or design you use. As for the buttons, functionalities, and UI of the Tough TG7, the ease of use will depend on what the user is familiar with. For me as an example, I have not used a digital camera for around 8 years. All I use are cell phones for taking photos and videos in that span of almost a decade. So when I first used a TG7, there is a learning curve. I can't even find how to shoot a slow motion video one time, or how to adjust the size of photos from 3x4 to 16x9. It took me about a week and lots of looking up the TG7 instruction manual before I get the hang of operating the tough TG7 by heart. 
If you are always exposed to digital cameras or DSLR types of camera, I don't think there will be that much learning curve for you. For a digital camera, the UI of the TG7 is user-friendly enough. The last time I used a digital camera, the only way to copy the files out of the camera is by a wired USB connection. But these days, it is common for the digital camera to have an app companion, which you can use to copy the files from the camera wirelessly. And Tough TG7 is no different. You can use the OI Share app to copy files wirelessly. And in addition to that, you can also use the app to control the shutter button from your phone, and even use the phone as a remote viewfinder of the camera. Tough TG7 has all the usual functionalities, bells and whistles of the modern digital camera, which makes its handling and usage easy for the users. TG7 has 9 shooting modes, and more sub-modes for each. But since most users will use the auto mode of the digital camera, most shots that I'll show here, and where I will base my review, are taken on auto mode. On a well-lit environment where there's plenty of light to work on, the TG7 produces great pictures. It's full of details. Colors are vibrant but not oversaturated. Contrast is a bit heavier than I'd like it to be, but it's not bad. In some cases, it even helps the photos pop out. On indoor photos, as long as the lighting is heavy, the photos are as good as you can get from outside. Even taking close-up shots of food, as you can see here, are full of details. And the natural pocket or background blurring is great. The aperture of the TG7 doing its work. As I've mentioned many times over on my previous TG7 videos, on a right setting, with plenty of lights, the photos that you can get from TG7 is superb. It can go head-to-head -head with a Samsung, or an iPhone, or a Xiaomi Ultra Phone's camera-level photos. I also tried the people mode, which I think is the portrait mode of TG7, but I could be wrong. And the photos came out great, but the Baka effect is a hit or miss. Unlike cell phones, digital camera don't have enough processing power to do a post-editing or fine-tuning of photos. In cell phone portraits, the phone is heavily processing the photo to add background blurring effect. All for a digital camera, like this TG7, it just heavily relies on what the lens can capture. TG7 has 4 times optical zoom. And contrary to what I've said to my previous video about TG7, after looking further at their zoomed photos, they are not bad. TG7 was actually able to retain a good quality photo up to its maximum of 4 times zoom. For dynamic range though, TG7 is a hit or miss. Sometimes it captures good dynamic range, but oftentimes, it does not. Like what you see here, the sky is just shown as plain light gray. Here it's even worse. The side of the building, where the sun is shining bright, has almost disappeared from the photo. This one focuses on the sky, so the branches and leaves have become a silhouette, even though the sun is not even near this area of the sky. And talking about the sun, avoid taking photos that directly captures the sun, because it can totally ruin the shot. The glare of the sun on these shots are out of control. Challenging exposure is also a problem for TG7. When the scene has two different exposure levels, you can only choose one shade to focus on. Either the shadow, or the bright area. When you focused on the bright area, the shadow area will be very dark and underexposed. On the other hand, if you focus on the shadow area, the bright area will be overexposed. Again, lack of post-processing power, which the cell phone has and digital camera does not, is the big factor here. Always keep that in mind when taking photos from a digital camera. Moving on to low-light photography. On a mid-level lighting, the photos start to get soft. It's a hit or miss, and most of the time, it comes out muddy. Sometimes even the focus is affected. Putting bright lights on the subject can help, but it's still not as good as when you can get from a well-lit environment. The subject details are still really good, but most of the time, the background becomes really noisy. And using the built-in flash of the TG7 only worsen the shot, making the subject overexposed. As you can see here. Increase the darkness of the environment more, and you will consistently get a muddy, noisy, and most of the time, unusable photos. And don't even bother trying to capture something on an almost total darkness, as it will render just that, darkness. And the flash totally does not help even a little bit. But I think the flash diffuser accessory for TG7 will be very helpful for this kind of situation. Just like in 95% of all the cell phones in the world, the low light photography of the TG7 is not good. The mid-level lights are still decent, but lower lights than that will be a disaster. Okay. For the videos, just like in the photos, as long as the lighting is good, it can produce a great footage, which is on an ultra-phone level of quality. And since this is a tough camera, you even have an advantage, like recording a video like this, putting the TG7 beside the air hockey table, not caring of the danger that it might hit by a high-speed puck. I'm sure, almost no one watching this video will dare to take a shot like this using their very expensive phone. Slow motion videos is also available in Tough TG7. The maximum is 480 frame per second, which can only have up to 360p resolution. 
there's 240 fps with max resolution of 720p and 120 fps with max resolution of 1080p footage for 480 fps is good but it's way too slow and has a very low resolution well the 1080p 120 fps is still fast for me i think the goldilocks zone for slow-mo movement is the 240 fps but sadly it's only up to 720p you can't get the best of both worlds i guess as mentioned earlier, due to the lack of graphical powers that cell phones have, there are many things that you will wish you have in the TG7 video captures. First, and the most obvious one, is the lack of stabilization. The tough TG7 is not advisable for taking handheld videos while walking, especially when running. It's too shaky, rendering a footage that is more dizziness inducing than the Blair Witch Project. Taking the shakiness of the footage aside, you will appreciate how vibrant the shots are. On times where the camera is pointing steady to a single frame, you will see how clear and great the footage are. But as you move the camera to span, or when you start walking, the frames seem to overlap each other, and there's a constant focusing and refocusing happening. Combine that lack of stabilization with zooming in, and you will get this horrible shot. It's like there are a spring of ghosts on every subject in the shot. Zooming in on a steadier hand is a lot better. But there's the problem again of the constant focusing and refocusing, which is why the zoomed in footage looks really blurry. A tripod is highly recommended when taking a zoomed footage. Just like in the photos, the auto exposure of the TG7 is still a problem on videos. As you can see here, the sunlight parts in the video are overexposed, which almost show those parts as blank white areas. And when switching from one exposure to another, the auto exposure switching of the TG7 is really slow. This kind of fast auto exposure switching is available to all phones now, even the low-end ones. But again, digital cameras does not have powerful GPUs and CPUs like cell phones have. Speaking of features in phones that you'll miss in digital cameras, the autofocus of the TG7 is really slow. And I mean really slow. Look at this footage. Every time I go far or near the subject, it takes about 4 to 5 seconds before the TG7 can get to the proper focus on the subject. In a mid-level lighting environment, the footage from the TG7 starts to get noisy. They are still very much usable, but not as crisp as the footages on good lighting. Taking videos outside at night, the recording is too underexposed and has a super high contrast. As you can see in this footage, the only visible items are the lights. Everything else are total pitch black color. If you're not a light source, tough TG7 will not recognize you in the video recording. Taking low-light video indoor seems be better than outside. It's still noisy and grainy, but at least you can still recognize some of the areas around the subject. Although, comparing this footage versus what I can see in my naked eye, this is still way underexposed. Then, when you turn on the flash and take the footage on the same light setting, the subject will now be overexposed. We can't find the middle ground here, and that's what we need. For an almost totally dark environment, forget about it. It will just look like a blank black screen. Now for what I think is the best feature of the tough TG7, the macro shots. You can take the TG7's lens as close as 10mm, or just 1cm, from the subject. This is equivalent to 7x magnification. And on microscope control, you can even zoom in 4 times more. Look at this first sample. See how close and how clear the macro shot is. Needless to say, these shots need a proper lighting. But the good thing about macro shots for the tough TG7 is that they have accessories to capture great macro even on dark environments, with the use of OM system accessories like the FD1 or LG1 flash diffusers. LG1 is two US dollar cheaper, but I'm sure FD1 has a better light diffusing feature. Just attach these accessories to the TG7's lens mount, and you can get as close to the subject as you want and get great macro shots even on dark places. And to give you an idea how powerful the macro shot of the Tough TG7 is, I took several shots of my ZenBook 13 OLED laptop screen, from a close-up, going nearer and nearer every shot. And the closest I can get is this. Look at that. I can basically see every pixel, or every single LED light of my laptop screen. Amazing. TG7 is basically a microscope. Another great macro feature of the TG7 is the focus stacking. It basically takes a lot of pictures, each with a different focal point. From the farthest focal point up to the nearest focal point. It will then give you three shots. The one with the nearest focal point, another one with farthest focal point, and a combination of all the shots with different focal points, highlighting all the parts in focus. Producing a macro shot where the foreground, the background, and everything in between, are perfectly in focus. Truly amazing macro shots. The TG7 is hands down, the best macro photography camera I have ever used, and it's not even close.
The TG7 also comes with a stereo microphone, which I think lacks any form of noise suppression, but it is good enough, and it can pick up voices clearly, as long as there's no background noises overcoming your voice. Here's a sample to give you an idea. Hello, this is a test of the microphone of the Tough TG7. And I am on street side, although there is no vehicles here right now. So, I hope everything's okay with the microphone. Okay. Alright. Time for the verdict, and let's start with the Tough TG7's weakness. Low light is definitely a problem for this digital camera, both for photos and videos. And since this is a digital camera, not a cell phone with all of its GPUs and CPUs and extra chips for digital power, the TG7 relies much only to what the lens can capture. Due to this, it cannot do a real-time post-processing, which especially affects the video capture. It has a below average to bad stabilization. Autofocus and auto exposure is present, but they are really slow, around 5 seconds to adjust and lock a focus and exposure. Dynamic range is also not that good, which is also due to the reliance to the lens and lack of post-processing power. For the lack of bokeh effect, or the depth of field in photos, I will not consider it as a weakness, since I like the natural look on the TG7, more than the artificial bokeh that cell phones create. For the low-light photos and video, it is indeed bad. But to be pragmatic, whoever takes a picture or records a video on a dark environment, Unless you are investigating something, or catching someone do indecent things, or creating a horror film, I don't think anyone on their right mind will use a camera on a dark environment. And TG7 can produce great photos and videos on a good to mid-level lighting, and I believe that is good enough for most people. The lack of stabilization and dynamic range, and slow autofocus and auto exposure, are indeed weaknesses, which most digital camera suffers from, since to remedy these things, you will need more advance, and probably bigger hardware, which will not fit on a compact digital camera. And I think that's the trade that you'll have to live with, if you want a point and shoot digital camera. Portability versus Pro Features. Despite these few shortcomings, if you can even call it that, the OM system Tough TG7 is still a great and worthy modern point and shoot digital camera. Connectivity and transferring of files is easy and reliable. It has a lot of sensors, like the GPS, e-compass, manometer, thermometer, and accelerometer, with data you can all attach to your photos and videos. On an ideal lighting situation, the photo quality are comparable to the best of the best cell phones out there. And the macro shots. Oh my god the macro shots are superb. The TG7 has the capability to take the best macro shots in the world. And of course let's not forget why this camera is called tough. It is built like a tank. And that is the main selling point of this camera. With a tough TG7, you don't need to worry about your device. You can take it anywhere, within body of waters, on the sand, you can let the kids use it, and never worry about its safety. In this time and age where cell phones are ridiculously getting expensive every iteration, a tough digital camera definitely has its place in world again. That peace of mind on using the tough TG7, as MasterCard says, is priceless. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Nilasuj for watching. Noba Air.